The newly announced Huawei P10 continues where the P9 left off last year and offers improvements in pretty much every aspect – design, screen quality, performance, and even the Leica dual camera setup. I am Ricky for GSM Arena, and this is our Huawei P10 review. The Huawei P10 has the same dimensions as last year's P9, but the similarities end there. The new model has a slightly smaller screen, a front-mounted fingerprint sensor, a larger battery, and a beefier camera. But for a change, let's start at the back. The Hyper Diamond cut finish on the back of the Dazzling Blue version is unlike anything we've seen or touched on a phone. The back surface feels almost like a really fine metal file. It looks like it's made to last and it's both glossy and yet hard to smudge with fingerprints. It does need a more thorough rub from time to time since the textured surface tends to collect grime every once in a while. The sandblasted black version has a matte surface, and it's probably the one you might want to pick up if you're after a more conservative look. The P10's screen is what you would need to clean more often, as it smudges like there's no tomorrow. On the positive side, the 5.1 inch screen is quite sharp, and it has deeper blacks and higher brightness than the P9's. As a result, it's quite contrasty, almost as good as the iPhone 7's display, and it's really easy to use in direct sunlight. The phone has a reversible USB-C port for charging, just like the P9, but data transfer speeds are still limited to USB 2.0. At least we get a 3.5mm audio jack, something we no longer take for granted ever since Apple and HTC started using USB headphones. The SIM slot on the dual SIM model would take either an extra SIM card or a micro SD card depending on your needs, but you can't have both. There aren't any stereo speakers either. There is just a single one at the bottom. At least the speaker redeems itself by pumping out sound with plenty of volume. The battery on this one has a bigger capacity than the P9's. Thanks to Huawei's supercharge adapter, you can fill it up halfway in just 30 minutes. The battery life was noticeably better than the P9's in pretty much every test we tried. It still received the same 75 hour endurance rating, but this was because of the higher than usual standby battery draw and it could probably be optimized further with a closer eye on what you have running in the background. The phone offers a special feature for optimizing background apps. You can whitelist certain apps or have others automatically close as soon as you lock the screen. The P10 ships with the latest Android 7.0 Nougat, but Huawei has come up with a lot of tweaks of its own. For example, you can have two instances of some social apps running simultaneously on the phone, for when you need access to two accounts. The UI also comes with a choice of whether you'd like to use the app drawer or have it iPhone style where apps live on the home screen. The system will also let you know of any power intensive apps that may get stuck running in the background. You can also deny internet access to specific apps that you choose. Huawei has also been utilizing knuckle gestures for a while, as a quick way to enter split screen mode, screenshot a particular area of the screen, or even start recording your own interaction with the device on video. Huawei's own Kirin 960 chipset delivers some serious performance in both CPU intensive and GPU intensive apps, and it often tops our benchmark charts. Even more, the smartphone never gets uncomfortably warm, but you do get about a 30% drop in performance scores if you push it for longer stretches of time. The great chipset choice, however, means that even then it remains a solid performer. The Huawei P10 makes use of the same Leica dual camera setup that we saw on the Mate 9. You get a 12 megapixel color sensor sitting next to a 20 megapixel black and white one. There's also OIS and several autofocusing technologies that complement each other. The combination of these two different sensors allows lossless two-time zoom, which actually works quite well. You can zoom even further, but that takes its toll on image quality. The two cameras also work together to create high quality bokeh effects, which you can adjust even after the shot was taken. And of course, the monochrome sensor also takes some striking black and white photos. It also offers higher dynamic range in low light scenes, so your photos in the dark will usually have much better exposed shadows without sacrificing the contrast in any way. In good light, the 12 megapixel color photos have plenty of detail with little noise, true to life colors, and wide dynamic range. Due to the mature processing, textures and foliage are very natural looking. As for low light shots, photos at sunset are fine, but night images often lack sharpness due to either focusing issues or camera shake, even though the P10 is equipped with plenty of tools to help it in exactly these types of situations. 
When the light is low, grabbing a tripod and switching to manual mode works wonders if you know what you're doing. If you lock the ISO to a low setting and use longer shutter speeds, you can get some stunning long exposure shots. And when it comes to video recording, the 4K video capabilities represent a solid upgrade over the P9. 4K videos are sharp, detailed, and exhibit good contrast and pleasant colors. Unfortunately, the H.265 video codec means they're not directly uploadable to YouTube. Some desktop video players may also need an extra decoder before they can even play the files transferred over from the smartphone. So to sum things up, the Huawei P10 looks quite attractive. It has one of the best screens in the business, while battery life and charging speeds are top-notch. The camera is great and the chipset performance is class-leading as well, so we've got all the basic ingredients of an exceptional smartphone. But this may no longer cut it in 2017 when we expect an expensive top-tier smartphone to come with at least some kind of rated water resistance. Anyway, even as it is, the Huawei P10 is an excellent device, and we didn't find any serious flaws with it. But unfortunately, with a price of 600 euros, many people might prefer going for last year's flagships like the Galaxy S7 which has already dropped in price and is substantially cheaper than the P10. If you can get a good deal on the Huawei P10, go for it by all means. It's a great smartphone that's easy to recommend. But if you have to think about it twice, you might want to shop around for a bit first. So there you have it. This was all for our Huawei P10 review. Don't miss checking out our full test findings over at gsmarina.com.